Hello everybody, today uh, we're going to talk about a very practical topic, intra-aortic balloon pump. I won't go into the detail and the controversies related to that, like shock to trial, impress trial, when people will say, okay, the balloon pumps are of, are of no use, but we still use them. The routine use of balloon pump is class 3, but it still has class 2 indication in some patient with cardiogenic shock. Of course, patients who are not doing very well, they have anterior wall MI, um, and you don't want to give them big bore impella or ECMO. This could be a, a good device for those patients. Let's talk about the indications for the balloon pump, as we talked about if the patient has got shock. Number two, if the patient has got, most of the time we do it for anterior wall MI. If they have a massive anterior wall MI and their blood pressure is low and um, their LVDP is found to be like in 30s or 40s, this um, intraaortic balloon pump can support a little bit. There is a lot of talk about whether it increases coronary circulation or not. I won't go into detail again, as I said, but. For some reason, they say that when since it augments the diastolic flow, it can increase uh, coronary circulation. And in terms of the coronary circulation, is the right coronary artery, which is more vertical, uh, that they say that it gets more blood um, if the balloon pump is put in those patients who are not doing very well. Some of the contraindication for the balloon pump, so those are very obvious. If you have aortic regurgitation, you don't want to give, you don't want to put that balloon pump, it's just gonna push the blood back into the left ventricular cavity. If you have aortic dissection, so that's another thing, you don't want to put a balloon pump because you might be, you know, shoving the wire into the dissection plane and causing more of the dissection. If you have any kind of stenosis in the aorta, you don't want to give a balloon pump because potentially it can either rupture the balloon pump or it can rupture the aorta. Not a good idea. Some of the relative contraindications are if they have mechanical valves, like aortic valves, you can still put it, um, but you have to know that you're increasing the risk of having uh, infection and all those problems and these patients might be on anticoagulation so the bleeding is one issue as well let's look at the balloon pump what it looks like i know we don't put a whole lot in the cath lab and even if we do most of the time it's the, the interventional fellow you know who who jumps in and and uh, the other fellows don't get a chance uh, to see the setup. So the balloon pump can come into different uh, sizes and we usually call that like a volume. It can be like a 50 cc, 60 cc, 40 cc. For the most part we go with a 40 or 50 cc. Um, um, if the patient is very big and tall and then you can also go with a with a higher volume of the balloon pump so it's not the length it's the volume of the balloon pump that they usually measure it inside the balloon pump you have the helium gas why helium helium is just because um, the flow of the helium is very brisk so when the balloon pump pushes the air into the balloon pump it inflates very quickly and when there is suctioning the balloon pump deflates very quickly so that inside these tubings the helium flows very rapidly but still if the balloon pump ruptures there is a chance of thrombosis and all that because of the helium and that will be the true for for any kind of air as well you have a tubing through which the helium gas flows i'm just gonna mark this and that is what you give it give to to the to the nurse at the bedside where, where they hook it you have this red wire 
which is a, a sensor and the sensor is at the tip of the uh, of the balloon pump so what you need to know about this sensor is it that it is a very sensitive sensor it's like a piezoelectric crystal there and it senses uh, the pressures um, so if while inserting the balloon pump this sensor gets damaged you have to kind of go ahead and put a new balloon pump and then you have these another tubing I'm just going to mark this this is another tubing that you you put the the saline in there because the the tip of the balloon pump has got a hole and that transduces the arterial blood pressure so the balloon pump can also show you the arterial blood pressure and when we will see the tracing i will show you so this is kind of the setup for the balloon pump things that you know you need to know this is these arrows here is the shaft of the balloon pump you don't want to kink it while you are pressing it the other big thing important practically is when you put the balloon pump it is wrapped and dried in a way that it can go through the eight french sheath but once it comes in contact with the blood it starts to open up so once you are pushing the balloon pump in the sheath you have to be very um, careful in that you don't kink it but at the same time you want to make sure that you push it quickly so that it does not expand while you are pushing through the sheath because longer you take and it's just gonna keep you know expanding and unfolding let's come to the waveform i'm going to come to the figure two and this is the most important uh, part of the discussion on the top you will see this ekg i, I label it as I, I draw it as blue one thing you have to know and it's very easy to remember is when this when does the balloon pump trigger the easiest way is the t wave so T wave triggers the inflation of the balloon pump. So this is an easier way and I hope you will never forget. So when does the, the balloon pump inflate or triggers is at right at the T wave. So this is your T wave here. I'm just going to draw a line here. And that's where the balloon pump will trigger or the balloon will inflate. And that is during the diastole. So this is your diastolic time. And this is when the balloon pump has to inflate and that makes sense when there is systole the balloon pump deflates so that the column of blood goes into the aorta into the legs and during diastole you have the inflation of the balloon pump so that it decreases the diastolic pressure and also may increase coronary circulation which is also as i already said is controversial but this is the t wave that triggers the inflation so if the patient is in atrial fibrillation or if they have a very bad rhythm or flutter you know probably the balloon pump will not work that well so you have to know that these are some of the limitation of the balloon pump in terms of the triggering because it needs a clean ekg and if the ekg is not picking up for some reason the patient is sweating or the leaves are not correctly connected the balloon pump will just keep peeping and giving uh, alarms to you so i'm just going to draw uh, trace this nice arterial waveform in black so i drew it in red so this is your normal systolic blood pressure so here this is your peak these are your peaks of the normal systolic uh, pressures when there is no augmentation meaning there is no balloon pump and as I, as we said the balloon pump triggers at the the mid diastole or the diastolic phase so as the pressure is going down you see this notch here as we talked in previous talks this is the closure of the aortic valve so the triggering of of the balloon pump is right before this closure of the valve so that by the time the mechanic mechanical force or the blood goes to the valve the valve is already closed so the timing is very important so when the blood when the balloon pump triggers it augments 
the systolic blood pressure so i just gonna point it here and i'm gonna circle this so this is your augmented systolic pressure so if i have to draw from here so you see that with the balloon pump you have augmented you have increased some of the systolic blood pressure and as we go through the cardiac cycle what will happen is when the balloon pump deflate it kind of lowers the diastolic pressure so you just kind of it creates a vacuum in the aorta when it is deflating so that the diastolic pressure goes down as well so this is your augmented diastolic pressure so if i have to put it in one word what basically you are doing i'm going to draw a line the augmented pressures have wide pressure so wide pulse pressure so see here this is your pulse pressure with augmentation and this is your pulse pressure which is without augmentation so you have increased in the systolic pressure this is augmented systolic pressure and then you have decrease in the diastolic pressure and this is the augmentation of that So again, the triggering of the of the balloon pump is very important, and that's why you have to have a clean EKG, and the triggering should happen right at the mid of that diastolic phase. And easy to remember when does the balloon pump triggers is at the T wave. I hope you will never forget that. So let's come to the screen when you are at the bedside and the nurses and other people are playing with the with the balloon pump. What are you basically looking at? I draw this picture here. So we're going to come to picture three. So on the top, you have EKG. So it probably will be in blue or something like that. And on the top, this number that I'm circling is your heart rate. Although it is labeled on the right side of the monitor here somewhere. But for you, if there is an EKG, the EKG is showing the heart rate. Next. This waveform that you are looking at right here is the normal arterial blood pressure. Remember we talked about the, the balloon pump. We go back to figure one and I'm just going to tell you that, you know, at the tip I said there, it, the tip of the balloon pump has a hole which kind of transduces the blood pressure and that is set up. Uh, in the as an arterial line so this waveform is just showing you the arterial waveform so this is i'm just going to circle that that the arterial blood pressure is 99 diastolic pressure is 48 i'm just going to make a square this is your mean so the next three numbers that you will see on the monitor are at the systolic pressure, diastolic pressure, and the 75 is your mean pressure. And then, last but not the least, the waveform that you will be seeing, I'm just going to mark arrow on that, is the same waveform that we talked in figure 2. So this is the waveform from the balloon pump. So this is what balloon pump is doing to the pressure. Again, in the middle, the waveform that you are seeing is the one being transduced by the tip of the balloon pump, which is separate, is is away from the from the balloon pump and just kind of telling you the central aortic pressure. The last one is your augmented waveform, kind of superimposed on the arterial waveform, exactly to see what's happening with what the balloon pump is doing. And then the pressure here, I'm just going to circle, is your augmented systolic pressure after the balloon pump. So here, if I have to draw this, you see the EKG. With each EKG beat, you see these balloon pump waveforms so that this is one to one. 
balloon pump ratio. In some instances, what you will see is instead of uh, these nice waveform here, in between, you will have the arterial waveform, the one just on the top. So it might be look like So it might look like the arterial waveform like this, and then you will have an augmented bead. Then you might have the arterial waveform like this, and then the augmented. So this is, you know, two to one. So meaning after every second bead, you're seeing an augmentation, augmenting of the bead, and that is the balloon pump is set as two to one. So it can be three to one, it can be four to one. When we are winning the balloon pump, we cut it down. Um, but one thing that you have to know, if it is one to one, you don't need anticoagulation. So you can get away with, with the heparin. But if you have two to one or three to one, so you are giving the time for the balloon pump to deflate and stay deflated. So that could be a nidus for the clot. Some of the other things that you can see on the balloon, uh, balloon pump can be this is the I'm just gonna this this bottle here is the helium, the amount of helium left in the balloon pump apparatus, not the balloon pump itself, but the, the gas tank that is connected to it. And on the left lower you have this balloon pump. Hmm. So this is the balloon pump itself, the amount of gas being injected into the balloon room hope you all like it please do let me know if you have any comments or if you have any other uh, topics that you want me to cover i'm trying to cover only the basics and, and the more practical topics have a good day